As a young professional, I am still getting used to dealing with clients, but today took the cake in terms of idiocy. What's your worst funniest strangest client story? A former divorce lawyer here, a client had a change of heart and decided not to go through with the divorce, and instead dismiss the petition and stay married. This was promptly followed up with claims of not being required to pay since I didn't get the divorce as originally planned, even though I spent about 8 months on the case, and nasty voicemails accusing me of trying to break up the marriage in the first place. You should have changed your job title on the invoice from divorce lawyer to marriage counselor. Client, I wanted that bag tag blue, me, um, do you happen to know the PMS color of the blue you're talking about? Client, no, it's a bag tag, have you ever seen a bag tag before? I thought you worked in the golf industry, you should know what bag tag blue looks like. Background, bag tags for golf bags can be any color in the rainbow. What do you mean the 7 kilobytes logo I sent won't work for the poster I'm asking you to print? Can you use a nicer font? I don't know which one I want, just something better. I'm looking at a terracotta roof across from my office right now. I wanted that color exactly. This one goes way back. I'm an old timer, but a C's machine with 3.5 inches disc has a 5.25 inches disc, folds it twice, quarters it, and shoves it in. Brakes drive, wonders why it didn't work. B takes box of 3.5 inches discs and puts the label over the sliding door that opens in each disc. Shoves it in drive. Luckily doesn't break drive. Wonders why it didn't work. C. Goes to machine with 3.5 inches disc. Has 5.25 inches disc. Puts it into a slot between the drive and the case. Hum. That didn't work. Goes and gets another disc. Hum. That didn't work. Does it until entire case is plugged and things start melting. D. Spills coke on disc. Lets it dry. Puts it into a Mac, one of the early ones. Rex Drive, goes to next Mac. Rex Drive, goes to next Mac. Rex 4 Macs in 10 minutes. Puts disc in a drawer. We fix Macs, wondering what happened. They come back. Someone else finds disc. Rex 2 Macs before we stop them. Look at disc, workout story. Unbelievable. If I wasn't directly involved I wouldn't believe it. Animation Notes. Producer, frame 35 the creature looks gay, make animation less gay, VFX notes, producer, please make the parallax more blue. I'll take ways to tell if your producer is on drugs for 300, Alex. First job out of college was a graphic design position, I sent one of our bigger clients a proof of a brochure they wanted, I get a phone call from the client, client, something is wrong with this proof you sent me, me. What's the problem? Client. Well the first page is fine, but the next few are um. I pull up the file and see that everything's as it should be. Client. I mean these are nice pictures and all, but man you didn't need to send them to me. Me. What? Client. Well there's all this smut. Me. What? Client. Oh Jesus. Here's one of a girl with giant cans. Me. I did not send you that. Client. This gal is just laying there spread eagle. Me. Client, really those aren't from me. Client, oh god. Now I'm looking at a clam bake. You really shouldn't have sent me these. Turns out he was using Windows Picture Viewer whatever it was called in Windows XP. And was somehow skimming through his cached images. Took a while to convince him they weren't from me. I would be crapping myself in your position on the phone. Paranoid that I had actually just sent a load of P instead of proofs. I do inside sales for an IT consulting company. I had a client that ordered a docking station and keyboard through us. He called me and asked why he couldn't get anything to come up on the screen. Probably because he didn't order a freaking computer. My job is to help people who have had their driver's license suspended. I either restore it if I am able or tell them what fines need to be paid, etc. This girl comes in to get restored from a DUI. Drunk off her butt. The smell of alcohol on her was overwhelming. I informed her that she couldn't get unsuspended because she hadn't completed her court-ordered alcohol education classes yet. She proceeds to go apashit on me, half crying, 
half screaming about how us and the police are conspiring against her. When she stood up to flounce out of my office there was a huge dark stain on the front back of her sweatpants and a puddle on the floor chair. She had peed herself without realizing it, or maybe on purpose to get back at me, but it really seemed like she didn't notice. My office had to be sanitized by the janitor and the chair had to be thrown away. She was just asserting her dominance. A new employee of higher rank and pay than me brought me a paper document and asked me if I could make an electronic version of it so she could email it to someone. After looking at it, it was obviously recently printed on crisp paper. When I asked her where she got the printout she said she printed it from her computer. I had no idea how to respond. We both worked in IT. That one is truly stunning. My boss gave a client a company car to drive, and two days later he asked me to call her and remind her to return it by the weekend. So I called her up, reminded her and she said she'd have it back on Saturday. Saturday rolls around, she doesn't return it, Sunday, no show. I called and left her a message that she did not return. Long story short, I called and left 8 or 9 messages over the next 3 freaking weeks asking her to return our car. Finally she calls me back. Minnie you, this is Mrs. Doe. You need to come here right now and pick up your car. I have workmen coming and the car is in their way. Clearly we have inconvenienced her by allowing her to park our car in an inconvenient spot. And she is upset. WTF. I replied. Annoyed but professional. Mrs. Doe I'm afraid I can't make it there now. Can you please bring the car here? Since you live 2 miles away. She is now even more upset. No, I have things to do. You need to pick up your car now. I told her, I won't be available to pick it up until 11.30. If that's a problem then you can bring the car here. She screams, I have workmen coming. I'm paying them hourly and the car is in their way. So it turns out the reason she kept our car so long was she had decided that instead of returning the car to us, she would go on vacation instead. While on vacation she drained the battery to the point where even a battery pack couldn't jump start the car. I called a tow truck. And then she calls again after running errands and returning home. This car is still in my driveway. Yes mom. I replied. We weren't able to jump start it. A tow truck is on the way. Unacceptable. Get this car now seriously. She was a very wealthy woman who was very much unaccustomed to not getting her way. The fact that she had demanded this car be gone, and it wasn't magically made so, not only upset her but offended her. Mom, I called our tow insurance, and they called three local tow companies. The earliest available tow truck will be there by 5 o'clock. Her final demand was for me to call every local tow truck company in the area, while she listened to make sure I did, and see if any could be there faster. That was the point where I told her if the job I'm doing isn't adequate, she needs to contact my boss and hung up. It upsets me that our company feels they have to, figuratively, suck a client's dong to get their business. I always feel the quality of the work should speak for itself. Unfortunately this is not the way the world works. Still pisses me off, though. A client of ours sent out an email to our team which basically resulted in us completely having to redo his tax return. One of the managers on the account replied to our team about how this client always procrastinated and was a real brash dickhead. Too bad she sent reply all including our client. The minutes immediately following her reply were tense. The partner on the account was panicking and she was in tears for her mistake. Lucky her. The client responded with haha, yeah, I can be a real butthole sometimes and found it hilarious. I once sent an email to my boss telling him about a proposal, and saying that the potential client clearly has no idea what's going on. My boss forwarded the email to the guy asking if he could clarify. We did not hear back. Hello, I'm you in 15 years. The avalanche of bulls that clients have spewed my way is massive. It's astonishing, really. I don't fold people for it. It's just human nature. Plus, the more you specialize, the more myopic your worldview becomes. Almost as if you dump some information in favor of other. Anyway, the best one involved a director level executive from the massive worldwide retailer stopping my presentation and, in a rather bitchy way, pointing out a flaw in my taxonomy. I'm a UXIA professional. 
in front of 20 people in a boardroom, with another 40 listening in from various locations. She asked if I had made a mistake when I categorized a portion of the content. Shouldn't South Africa be up a level, you know, so it's equal to North America and Europe. No mom. South Africa is a country on the continent of Africa. I've posted this before, but it's one of my favorite stories. I was speaking with a customer that had a rather significant cable bill, going over his account. I found that the bill was largely the result of adult on demand orders. Naturally, because almost no one will admit to watching porno, the customer claims he never purchased any of the on-demand orders. So, I pull a full report on the on-demand orders from his cable box. The full report tells us what was ordered, when it was ordered, how long it was watched, how many fast-forwards, rewinds, pauses, plays, and stops are hit, and when the order was removed from the cable box. I imagine this info was used for lots of metrics. But when dealing with customers, it gives us an easy way to confirm or deny if a customer fat fingered the order and accidentally ordered something. The general rule was that if something was watched for less than 5 minutes without a bunch of FFs or rewinds, they were probably telling the truth. Anyways, full details show that the pornos were watched for an average of 20 minutes with plenty of fast forwards and rewinds. Still in denial, the customer then asks when the movies were ordered. I give him the approximately 1.5 month span that the movies were ordered. He then claims that it's impossible as he was out of town during that time and the only other resident of the household was with him. Since I'm such a nice fella, I continued to give the benefit of the doubt and asked him to double check the serial number on his cable box. It would have required about 4 layers of fuck ups. But it's possible that the cable box at his house isn't the one on his account and someone else managed to get the box that's in his name at a different house. Naturally, these layers of fuckups didn't happen and the serial numbers match. At this point I explain that the only way someone could have ordered those movies is by being in the man's house. The customer pauses for a moment, then says well, when I got home, I found the back door open. I'm speechless for a few seconds. This man is suggesting that someone broke into his house repeatedly for more than a month for the express purpose of watching movies, both pornographic and otherwise. I then give the only advice I can think of, sir, you need to burn everything. Someone broke into your house and watched over $1300 worth of pornography. There is no surface in your house that I would trust. TLDR fire is the great purifier. As a fellow graphic designer I hope you will laugh with me over the following. Can you make it pop more? Add a red border to the text so it stands out. I changed the file extension from .jpg to .i so you have the vector version now. Can you make the picture show the other side of the object? I don't like it. Can you make it more? You know? And as a finale, getting sent 32 kilobytes files for print. Make it pop. Make IT jump out of the screen. Oof, it never really stops either. I work a lot with a non-profit, good cause, sweet staff. I support them completely and love working with them. But every so often I want to strangle all of them with one long extension cord. Last year I designed an HTML newsletter for them. Just cleaning up the info they wanted to send. Making it more readable and adding some photos design elements for emphasis interest. At the bottom of the email was a table of maybe 20 names with titles institutions identifying the people. I slotted every name into the table. But some of the names were longer than others. Some titles were longer. Some had institute names. ETC. So the visual balance of the names in the table was a bit wonky. Who cares? Right. It's a dang newsletter. It had time sensitive information. The names were just there to fill up space. I swear. This non-profit did at least 12 revisions to that stupid list of names. And in the process delayed their time sensitive newsletter over 10 days. Their email list was already pretty tiny. Less than 2000 active addresses. If you know anything about newsletters you know that they have fantastically low open rates. So basically this non-profit paid for 12 revisions and delayed their newsletter for 10 days so 100 people could enjoy the perfectly balanced list of names. I was in a spec meeting for some banner ads for a large telecommunications company. The creative guys were giving their concept to the other side of the table. When one of the older gentlemen stops and says, 
so the banner will only animate for less than 10 seconds, and the creative guy says yes and starts to go into an explanation about catching the user's eye or some BS and the older gentleman puts up his hands and leans over to the guy to the right of him and asks, did we pay for a 15 or 30 second spot? Everyone in the room fell silent for a second as we tried to process what he was saying. Meanwhile he continues because if we paid for a 15 second spot, why should we only use 10 seconds? Since our company did all sorts of TV work as well, one of the creative guys picked up on it and basically explained that banners don't work like TV. The client literally thought that everyone coming to the web page would stop for 15-30 seconds and watch the banner. We have clients all the time who want their banners to stay up on their page for 30 seconds at a time. We try to explain to them that it's too long. Why not use a refresh? But they have no idea what we are talking about no matter how hard we try to explain it. We have a joke in the office that if a potential client gives us a AOL email, they are too old to understand what we need to tell them. Ha 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 ha. I feel your pain. I once made a website for someone. I changed the dang colors with him for at least 4 hours. In the end after I told him the color scheme is crap he said to me, I'm colorblind and this looks good to me was doing some basic CAD work for this old engineer. Basically he scribbled on paper and I transferred it to the computer via AutoCAD. One day we were having a little trouble and I suggested something on the computer to try. Keep in mind he knows nothing about computers. Well he proceeds to throw a hissy fit and state strongly how he does not pay me to think but rather do what he tells me. Well a few days later we were having a similar problem on the computer. I knew the solution rather instantly. However I kept my mouth shut for a few hours while he struggled. Finally I suggested a solution. He asked why I didn't say so sooner. I then reminded him in a pseudo polite manner how he didn't pay me to think. He immediately shut his mouth and then mumbled something. Quit working with that butthole yesterday after a year of his crap. Have many more stories like that. I'm working on my engineering degree right now. Frick that guy. Must be a crap engineer. Not me, but my dad. He's a vet and the best client story he's told me is a lady bringing in a group of puppies to be checked out and get shots, etc. She claimed to have found them and thought they were very cute. All would have been well except that they were no ordinary puppies. They were coyote pups. This woman found wild coyotes and brought them to my father thinking she was going to have some new puppies that needed shots. So did she keep the coyotes or not? I'm a funeral director. I was working with a family where the next of kin was a woman with a slight touch of dementia. Just enough to make her not entirely lucid. The children completed arrangements in the contract. Through the entirety of the arrangement conference. We're aware that she's not quite sure why she's there. It hasn't sunken that her husband just died. Anyways. We get around to the day of the service and it's family only for the first hour. He's up at the front of the chapel dressed to the nines. And the wife has hobbled her walker up to look at him. She's in some distress. Finally connecting that this body is her husband. Haltingly, she asks me to open the foot end of the casket so she can see his feet and confirm that it's him. Of course I oblige. Important fact, I did not embalm, dress or cosmetize this body. So I lift open the foot end and immediately the daughter gasps. Those aren't his shoes why are there a stranger's shoes on dad Q total panic mode for the next 5 minutes. So I do my best to smooth it over, taking the shoes off and vowing to kill my embalmer later. I figure I'm done, but no. Mom wants to see his bare tootsies. Okay, so I slip the sock down on the left foot, then tug it off. She is delighted to see the blackened, dead flesh of necrotized toes. She reaches a hand out to tenderly caress these toes, and I'm barely holding down the gag reflex before myself and the daughter intervene. I spend the next few minutes trying to slip the sock back on without accidentally breaking off his toes. Let's just say that when that family walked out our front doors, I was beyond relieved. We had a lady who wanted us to put her husband's wedding ring and dentures in right before the visitation. The embalmer made the decision to glue the fingers together and the hands on top of each other and the teeth. Well, you know how that is. She was actually pretty understanding after the FD explained it but all the employees were sweating bullets. I think you'll like these other edits. Our Tales from Tech Support. Our Tales from Retail. Our Tales from the Pizza Guy. Good stories. I never knew about our tales from the pizza guy. 
Thanks for bringing it to my attention. I'm editing a commercial for a charity concert right now and my client told me he had video to work with. He sent me YouTube clips. 240p YouTube clips. A lady comes in with her laptop telling me that her cat slept on the keyboard and half the keys comes out with numbers instead of letters. I showed her what numlock is. She thanked me and left. I work at a convenience store. Well that was convenient for her at least. About 3 years ago, I had a job at a small print shop as their graphic designer. Desktop publishing mostly, occasional business card, mostly just lame forms and such. We got a job for a towing company. They were AAA All American Towing, or something similar. Something with a lot of us so they'd be listed first in the phone book. They wanted us to whip up something over the top patriotic. American flags, bald eagles, all of it. I do a quick little mock up, and send it off to them for a sign off on the proof. They love it, every single part of it, except the bald eagle stock photo I used. They said the eagle looked angry, and not friendly at all. My manager and I make a couple jokes, mostly about it being a bird of prey, not a bird of play, etc. In a minute of downtime, I opened the project up, and spent some time screwing around with the liquify tool. Basically made it look like the eagle was grinning. It was ridiculous. Sent it over to the manager. We had a couple laughs. About a week later, I get the revised proof back from the customer. Somehow, we had sent them my joke happy eagle. They love it. Run it. Business cards for everyone in the company. Envelopes. Letterhead. Invoice sheets. And vehicle wraps for the trucks. Saw the trucks all over town for months. And laughed my butt off every time. Oh please. Oh please. Post a pic. User complained bitterly when informed we would be upgrading her with a mouse. I'm an old professional. Didn't want a mouse. Didn't use a mouse. Don't bring her a mouse. When we came to install the mouse and the software, Windows 3.1 if I recall, she said, fine, I'll take the mouse. Just please, please, don't take my keyboard. I have posted this before and people found it quite funny. I was once hired as a web designer at a company that sells machine parts. I was supposed to create and maintain their web page for them. On my first day at the office I was seated at my desk, which had no computer on it. I was told that I was to draw the website on paper and after it was approved I would get a computer. Well paper prototyping does have value but it's still a weird situation. I wonder how long you could have gone without a machine. Is it plugged in? Absolutely. I checked it twice. Do the lights turn on? No. Is it plugged in? Yes. Of course it's plugged in. Oh wait there is an error. NDA specific. That means it is not receiving power. Check the plug again. Oh, the lights turned on. That was with one of our seasoned sales guys. The trick is you don't ask people to check if it's plugged in, because it implies that they're idiots. You ask them to unplug it and plug it back in again. This one's from someone I know. He does a lot of one-off kiosk demo prototype applications in Flash. And one of the most annoying things he gets from clients is request to change the resolution or aspect ratio at the last minute. It's so much of a problem that he now requires them to lock it in up front. In writing. With multiple warnings that he won't change it for free later. They still end up whining about it and wanting him to change it at the last minute every. Single. Time. It's even better when they want resolutions or aspect ratios that clearly don't match the target displays. I once had a client tell me to rewrite my report without using the word this. He said it was too vague. Just as an experiment. I want all of you to push Ctrl plus F and search for this. Just look at all of the instances of the word this on your current page. And try to come up with an alternative word or phrase. I dare you. I freaking dare you. Find what? This. Replace with. Not that. Presto. I used to work in the appliance department of Sears. We had a woman call in who had recently purchased a stove. The stove was having issues and she wanted us to send someone out. It seems this particular stove was possessed. We offered to send a repair man out. We even offered to have our delivery team bring her another stove. Nope. Not good enough. She wanted us to send out a priest who could preform an exorcism. On a stove. I probably would have bought costumes for the delivery team and sent them on their way. 
I work in a bakery. I've had a few good ones. Firstly, bread that is made fresh and doesn't sell on that day. We slice it and bag it up, and then sell it the next day half price. Reduce wastages. Anyway in strolls a customer reads the little price sign we have and asks me what is yesterday's bread. I was dumbfounded. This one was just today. We sell these little soft rolls with single fillings. Egg. Cheese ham etc. Anyway the price got put up by management just to see how it would do. After a few weeks they decided to revert to the original price. Our prices fluctuate often so I'm used to customers questioning things going up but this one was brilliant. Anyone a customer comes in today and buys some. Me. That will be 99 pizza. Anything else. Him. But they are 1 pound and 20 pence. That's what I paid the other day me. Yes and I know but they have gone back down. I can assure you that 99p is the correct price him. But that can't be. We had to call our area manager so he could assure the customer. He was mad that he was getting something cheaper than expected. Or mad because he thought he'd been ripped off previously. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.